What happened to the guest who ruined the wedding and the couple almost divorced? Story one, the reception was in full swing. The dance floor packed with people having a great time. The DJ was spinning a mix of classic hits and modern tunes, keeping everyone on their feet. Spirits were high, drinks were flowing, and the energy in the room was electric. You could tell it was one of those nights where anything could happen. Out of nowhere, someone decided to kick things up a notch by recreating a scene from the classic comedy Animal House. If you've seen the movie, you'll know the moment I'm talking about. There's a scene where John Belushi's character, Bluto, screams, Turtle! on the dance floor and then throws himself down, lying on his back like a turtle stuck upside down. It's one of those ridiculous moments that only Animal House could pull off. And apparently, someone at this wedding thought it was the perfect time to bring it to life. It started with just one guy, probably a few drinks in, who suddenly yelled, Turtle! at the top of his lungs. The music was still blaring, and most people were too busy dancing to notice at first. But then he dropped to the floor, flailing his arms and legs in the air just like Belushi did in the movie. It was so unexpected, so absurd, that people began to laugh and cheer. But it didn't stop there. Seeing how much attention he was getting, a few others decided to join in. Before I knew it, there were five or six people on the dance floor, all doing their best turtle impressions, arms and legs kicking in the air, faces red from laughter. It was a sight to behold. Grown adults dressed in their wedding best, lying on the floor in fits of giggles as they mimicked a scene from an old comedy movie. And then it spread, like some kind of joyful, contagious madness. More and more people joined in, until nearly half the dance floor was filled with guests on their backs, all yelling, Turtle! and flailing around. The DJ, bless his heart, picked up on what was happening and cut the music for a moment, letting the sounds of laughter and shouting fill the room. Even the bride and groom, who were initially off to the side, caught wind of the craziness and couldn't resist getting involved. The bride, still in her gorgeous gown, kicked off her heels and joined the fun, her groom following suit. Seeing them there, laughing and rolling around with their friends and family, made the moment even more special. It was clear that this was one of those memories that would stick with them long after the wedding day. The whole thing probably only lasted a few minutes, but it felt like time had slowed down. The sheer ridiculousness of it all had everyone in stitches, and by the time people started getting up, Brushing off their clothes and catching their breath, the energy in the room was through the roof. The DJ, ever the professional, took the cue and cranked the music back up, transitioning into a fast-paced dance number that had everyone back on their feet, shaking off the silliness and getting back to the party. As the night went on, the turtle moment became the talk of the reception. People kept bringing it up, laughing about it, and joking that it should become a new wedding tradition. Even those who didn't join in had a blast watching the scene unfold and the mood it set carried through the rest of the evening. It was a reminder that sometimes the best moments at a wedding aren't the ones that are planned. They're the ones that happen naturally, sparked by a little bit of spontaneity and a lot of fun. Story two. My mom had always been a bit of a wild card, but I hoped, maybe foolishly, that she would hold it together for my wedding day. That hope was dashed the moment she burst into the dressing room. Instead of sharing in the excitement, she was furious. Apparently, my dad had stood up for me earlier, which infuriated her. She wanted to be the one calling the shots, and the fact that he had supported me instead of siding with her set her off. She didn't just argue. She screamed at me, slapped me, and even punched me. I was in shock, completely unprepared for the onslaught of anger she unleashed. My friends tried to intervene, but she was too far gone like a storm that had to run its course. And she didn't stop there. She pulled at my hair, ruining the style I'd spent hours getting just right that morning. I could feel sections of it coming loose as she yanked and tugged leaving me a mess just before the most important moment of my life. I had asked her earlier what she planned to wear, and she told me she didn't know. I suggested something blue, a color that would fit nicely with the wedding's theme. But when she showed up, she was dressed head to toe in black and yellow. She looked like a giant angry bumblebee, and her actions matched her appearance perfectly. Her outfit was just another way for her to assert control, to remind everyone that she wasn't going to play by anyone else's rules, not even on my wedding day. Once the ceremony began, I prayed she'd stay quiet, but that was too much to ask. As I stood at the altar, trying to focus on my vows and the man I was about to marry, I could hear her muttering under her breath. This is nonsense, she kept saying, just loud enough for me and a few others to hear. Each word was like a knife, cutting into what should have been a beautiful, sacred moment. When it came time for pictures, she flat out refused to participate. She didn't want to be part of capturing any memories of the day. Not that her behavior would have made for good photos anyway. But the worst was yet to come. After the ceremony, when we moved on to the reception, things took an even darker turn. My mom bypassed the receiving line, ignoring all the guests who were there to celebrate with us. She headed straight for the cake, 
which was a beautiful, multi-tiered creation that I had been looking forward to sharing with my new husband. But instead of waiting for the cake cutting, she grabbed a knife, sliced off a huge chunk, and scooped it up with her bare hands. As if that wasn't enough, she shoved some of the cake into her mouth, chewed it up, and then spit it out right at me. I stood there, speechless, as she spit cake all over my dress, the dress I had chosen with so much care. And as she stormed out, she made sure to leave with one final parting shot. This was a cow show and a huge flipping joke. I hope you're happy now, you flipping unpleasant. With that, she slammed the door behind her, leaving everyone in stunned silence. The reception went on, but the mood had shifted. I spent the rest of the day trying to hold it together, but the tears kept coming. It was supposed to be the happiest day of my life, but instead, it felt like a nightmare I couldn't wake up from. After that day, I made a decision. My mom would never be invited to anything important in my life again. I couldn't risk another scene like that, another day ruined by her toxic behavior. It was a hard choice, but it was necessary for my own peace of mind. Story 3. It was a big day, not just for my parents, but for me too. I had the honor of being the best man at their wedding. I felt like a grown-up, dressed in a little tuxedo that matched my dad's, and I was so proud to stand by their side as they exchanged vows. The ceremony was beautiful, and everything seemed perfect. That is, until the reception. As a 10-year-old, the whole concept of a wedding was still a bit of a mystery to me. Sure, I understood that it was a big deal, but the finer details, like the importance of moderation when it comes to alcohol, were completely lost on me. After the ceremony, we moved on to the reception, where the tables were set with elegant decorations, plates of food, and those little medicine cups of champagne that were meant for the toasts. To a kid, those tiny cups looked harmless enough, like something you might see in a science experiment or a fun party game. My friend, who was around the same age, and I were curious, and that curiosity got the better of us. We started going from table to table, picking up the little cups and downing the champagne inside them. At first, it was just one or two. The bubbly drink tasted strange, but kind of fun. Nothing like soda, but we didn't hate it. So we kept going, thinking we were just having a little harmless fun. But as it turns out, drinking alcohol in quantity when you're just 10 years old is anything but harmless. We didn't know our limits, didn't understand the consequences, and before long, we were giggling uncontrollably, staggering around the reception hall like miniature drunks. The adults were too busy with their own conversations and celebrations to notice what we were up to, at least at first. Then things took a turn for the worse. My stomach started to feel weird, like it was doing somersaults. The laughter faded, replaced by a growing sense of discomfort. I could barely stand up straight, and everything around me seemed to be spinning. That's when I realized I was in serious trouble. The champagne wasn't just a fun drink anymore. It was making me sick, really sick. Before I knew it, I was doubled over, violently ill in the middle of my parents' wedding reception. The feeling was like nothing I'd ever experienced. My head was pounding, my stomach was churning, and I felt completely out of control. The room, once filled with laughter and music, suddenly seemed overwhelming, and all I wanted was to go home. My parents, who were in the middle of celebrating what was supposed to be the happiest day of their lives, suddenly had to shift their attention to me. Someone realized what was going on and quickly got my dad's attention. He came rushing over, concern etched on his face, and it didn't take long for him to figure out what had happened. I could see the mix of worry and disappointment in his eyes as he and my mom decided that I needed to be taken home immediately. So there I was, the best man being escorted out of my parents' wedding before the night had even really begun. Instead of staying to enjoy the festivities, I was bundled into a car, clutching my stomach as we headed home. I spent the rest of the evening in bed, feeling miserable and more than a little embarrassed by what had happened. The next day, when I finally started to feel better, the reality of what I'd done hit me. I had been given such an important role in my parents' wedding, and I felt like I had let them down. But my parents, to their credit, weren't angry. They knew I hadn't meant any harm, that I was just a kid who made a mistake. They were more concerned about how sick I had gotten than anything else. And they made sure I knew that, despite everything, they still loved me. Story 4. Working at a high-end golf club with a ballroom that regularly hosted weddings, I thought I'd seen it all. From bridezilla meltdowns to groomsmen doing shots off the dance floor, you get used to a certain level of chaos when you're behind the scenes at these events. But nothing could have prepared me for the night when things took a turn from the typical to the downright scandalous. It was a beautiful, classy wedding. One of those events where everything seemed perfect on the surface. The guests were all dressed to the nines. The decorations were elegant, and the atmosphere was buzzing with that special mix of excitement and celebration. Among the guests was a particularly adorable couple in their early 30s, clearly smitten with each other. They were friends of the groom, and you could tell they were enjoying every moment of the evening. There was also another family at the wedding, your typical upper-middle-class country club family. 
They looked almost too perfect. A well-dressed husband and wife with their three preteen and teenage kids, ranging from about 10 to 16 years old. They fit right into the upscale vibe of the event, and nothing seemed out of the ordinary with them. As the night wore on, the reception kicked into high gear. The drinks were flowing, the dance floor was packed, and everyone seemed to be having a great time. I took a break from the chaos upstairs and headed down to the member-only women's locker room. Most of the staff used this space during weddings since most guests didn't even know it existed. It was a quiet, hidden spot where we could catch our breath for a minute before diving back into the fray. But as soon as I walked into the locker room, I realized something was off. I heard noises coming from the shower stall, the kind of noises that definitely didn't belong at a wedding reception. I peeked around the corner and sure enough there was a couple going at it in the shower, even though the water wasn't even on. My heart raced. This was not what I expected to find during my break. I quickly ran back upstairs to tell my coworkers. We all gathered, giggling and wide-eyed, waiting for the mystery couple to emerge. We were expecting to see that cute young couple we'd noticed earlier, walking out sheepishly after their little rendezvous. It seemed like the kind of thing they might get up to after a few too many glasses of champagne. After a few minutes, the young woman did indeed come up the stairs, adjusting her dress and looking around as if nothing had happened. We all exchanged knowing looks, barely containing our laughter. But then, about five minutes later, the other half of the couple walked out of the locker room and our jaws hit the floor. It wasn't her husband who followed her up the stairs. Instead, it was the dad from that picture-perfect family, the one who had arrived at the wedding with his wife and three kids in tow. The realization hit us like a ton of bricks. This wasn't some harmless flirtation between a couple of wedding guests. This was full-blown infidelity happening right under everyone's noses. We watched in stunned silence as both of them walked back to their spouses, acting completely normal, as if nothing had happened. The dad went straight over to his wife and kids, all smiles and affection, while the young woman cozied up to her husband. Neither of their spouses seemed to have any clue about what had just gone down in the locker room. It was like watching a car crash in slow motion. You couldn't believe it was happening, but you couldn't look away. Story 5. Everything was going according to plan, or so we thought. As part of the catering team, I was busy making sure everything ran smoothly. The cake, a stunning multi-tiered creation that was as delicious as it was beautiful, was set to be the highlight of the night. But as we were preparing to roll it out for the big cake-cutting moment, something unexpected happened. Out of nowhere, a guest walked into the venue carrying a cake of their own. At first, I assumed there must have been some kind of mix-up, maybe a miscommunication with the bakery. But then I noticed this cake was nothing like the elegant wedding cake we had waiting in the back. It was just a standard birthday cake, the kind you might pick up at a grocery store. Brightly colored frosting, generic decorations, the whole nine yards. I watched in confusion as this guest set the cake down on a table and started gathering people around. Apparently, this guest had decided that the wedding was the perfect opportunity to celebrate a random guy's birthday, which was the next day. Now, I'm all for a good birthday party, but this was a wedding, a day dedicated to the couple and their love story. A birthday celebration was definitely not on the agenda. As the clock ticked closer to midnight, I saw the guest moving around the room, quietly spreading the word about the upcoming surprise. The bride and groom were busy with their guests, completely unaware of the side plot that was about to unfold. And then, right on cue, the guest signaled for everyone to gather around the random birthday cake. The DJ, who must have been as confused as the rest of us, was roped into the plan. At midnight, the music was cut, and the guest led the entire room in a rousing rendition of Happy Birthday. I'll never forget the look on the faces of the bride and groom as they stood there, surrounded by their wedding guests, who were now singing to someone else. The whole room was filled with confused murmurs as people tried to figure out what was happening. Some guests sang along, not wanting to be rude, while others looked around, wondering if they had somehow missed a memo. Once the song was over, the guest proudly sliced into the cake and started handing out pieces. People were polite, but you could tell everyone was just waiting for someone to explain what the hell was going on. The whole thing felt surreal, like a wedding that had suddenly been hijacked by a birthday party nobody asked for. The bride and groom, bless them, handled the situation with grace. They smiled, thanked the guest for the thoughtful gesture, and tried to steer the night back on course. But the mood had definitely shifted. The perfectly planned reception had taken an unexpected detour, and it was hard to get things back on track. As the staff, we were left to clean up the remnants of this impromptu birthday party, still shaking our heads at what had just happened. The whole thing was so bizarre that we couldn't help but laugh about it afterward. It was one of those moments where you realize that no matter how much you plan, there's always the potential for someone to throw a wrench in the works, whether they mean to or not. Story 6? The wedding took place at the prestigious Olympic Club in San Francisco, 
a beautiful venue with sweeping views and an air of elegance. It was the kind of place where everything should have gone off without a hitch. My sister had planned every detail meticulously, and we were all set for a perfect day. But as the saying goes, sometimes reality is stranger than fiction. The first sign that things were going to take a turn happened just after the ceremony. Everyone was mingling, taking photos, and enjoying the cocktail hour when one of my buddies came up to me looking frantic. He had driven his BMW to the wedding, parking it in the designated area like everyone else. But when he went back to grab something from the car, it was gone. Not just moved or towed, straight up stolen. At first, we thought maybe it was a mistake, that someone had moved it as a prank, or that he had parked it somewhere else and just forgot. But after a frantic search around the parking lot, it became clear. Someone had taken his car, and they were long gone. To make matters worse, as we started to piece together what had happened, we realized that the culprit was likely another guest at the wedding. The guest list wasn't huge, but there were enough people there that it was hard to figure out who might have been responsible. It was one of those situations where you're so stunned that it takes a minute to process. This wasn't just a car. It was his pride and joy, a BMW that he'd worked hard to buy. And now, it was speeding away somewhere on the streets of San Francisco, stolen right out from under our noses during what should have been a joyful celebration. While we were still reeling from the stolen BMW, another bit of chaos was unfolding on the other side of the venue. The Olympic Club is famous for its golf course, and naturally, there were golf carts parked around the grounds. These aren't just any golf carts. They're well-maintained, expensive, and definitely not meant to be taken for a joyride. But one of the guests, apparently feeling adventurous, or maybe just drunk, decided that driving one of these golf carts off into the sunset was a great idea. We didn't realize what was happening at first. People were too busy with the reception, dancing and chatting, to notice that one of the golf carts was missing. It wasn't until someone spotted the cart tearing across the grounds that the full extent of the situation became clear. The guest, who clearly wasn't in his right mind, had taken the golf cart and was now attempting to drive it down Highway 1, one of the most famous and scenic highways in the country, but definitely not meant for golf carts. The image of a golf cart buzzing along a major highway, dodging traffic and trying to keep up with real cars, is one that's hard to forget. It was both hilarious and horrifying. Security quickly caught wind of what was happening and managed to intercept the guy before he got too far, but the damage was done. The guest was escorted back to the venue, looking sheepish but unapologetic, as if he had just been caught pulling a harmless prank. By the time the night was over, it felt like we had lived through some kind of bizarre, high-society crime spree rather than a wedding. My buddy had to deal with filing a police report for his stolen BMW, which thankfully was eventually recovered, though not before it had been taken on a joyride and left in less than perfect condition. The guest who tried to steal the golf cart? Let's just say he was the talk of the night, with everyone sharing wide-eyed, disbelieving stories about the guy who tried to take a golf cart onto Highway 1. Story 7 I witnessed one of those weddings during my time catering, and to this day I can't decide whether what happened was a total scumbag move or a stroke of genius. This particular wedding had a groom who was absolutely obsessed with every detail. He wasn't just involved in the planning. He practically took over the entire process, from the venue choice to the flowers to the color scheme, and even the tiny decorations that most people wouldn't think twice about. He had his hand in everything. The guy was a one-man wedding machine. On the day of the wedding, he was there bright and early, personally decorating the venue. You could tell he was in his element, arranging centerpieces, hanging up lights, making sure every last detail was perfect. It was clear that this day meant the world to him. The bride, on the other hand, seemed much more laid back, almost too laid back. She showed up just before the ceremony started, looking like she was just going through the motions. While the groom was buzzing around making sure everything was just right, she was nowhere to be found until it was time to walk down the aisle. As I watched them interact, it became obvious that the groom was far more invested in this whole wedding than she was. It was like he was living out his dream wedding while she was just along for the ride. The ceremony began, and everything seemed to be going smoothly. The groom was beaming, clearly thrilled to be marrying the love of his life. The officiant started the vows, the usual beautiful, heartfelt words that are supposed to mark the beginning of a couple's life together. But as the officiant was speaking, the bride started to look impatient. She shifted from foot to foot, glancing around as if she'd rather be anywhere else. And then it happened. In the middle of the efficient speech, the bride rolled her eyes and cut him off, saying, Yeah, 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 just marry us already. The way she said it didn't sound like she was too excited to wait, more like she was bored out of her mind and just wanted the whole thing to be over with. It wasn't a loving, playful interruption. It was more like she was checking off a box on her to-do list. The groom's face was priceless. He looked like someone had just punched him in the gut. But instead of reacting or saying anything, he just nodded to the efficient, 
signaling for him to speed things up. The officiant, clearly uncomfortable, hurried through the rest of the vows, and within minutes, they were pronounced husband and wife. The bride let out a sigh of relief, like she'd just finished a long day at work, while the groom tried to plaster on a smile, though it was obvious he was hurting. For the rest of the evening, the vibe was just off. The bride immediately headed to the bar and spent most of the reception drinking and chatting with friends, barely paying attention to the groom or the guests. Meanwhile, the groom did his best to enjoy the night, but you could tell that his heart wasn't in it anymore. The decorations, the venue, everything he had put so much effort into suddenly seemed meaningless. As a caterer, I've seen a lot of different wedding dynamics, but this one stuck with me. On one hand, I couldn't help but feel bad for the groom. He had put his heart and soul into planning a perfect day, only to have it dismissed by the very person it was meant to celebrate. It felt like a scumbag move on the bride's part, like she didn't care at all about the effort he'd put in or the significance of the day. But on the other hand, part of me wondered if this was the bride's way of taking control in a situation where she might have felt overwhelmed or sidelined. Maybe she never wanted a big, elaborate wedding in the first place, and this was her way of pushing back against the wedding industrial complex that her groom had fully embraced. Perhaps she was just over it and wanted to get to the part of the day where she could finally relax and have some fun. Story 8. We were all close friends, and there was this one guy in our group who, unfortunately, had a long history of struggling with alcoholism and a serious addiction to candy. We'd tried to help him over the years, but it's a tough battle, and he wasn't exactly receptive to the help offered. He showed up to the wedding already three sheets to the wind, staggering around with that telltale glaze in his eyes. It was clear from the start that this wasn't going to end well. Everyone was handed a mason jar to use at the bar, a nice little touch that fit the wedding's theme perfectly. But for him, it was just another vessel for more booze. He wasted no time heading to the bar, getting his jar filled to the brim, and then stumbling over to join a few of us who were chatting nearby. What happened next was the kind of thing you see in slow motion. He somehow managed to drop the mason jar, and it shattered all over the floor. Most people would step back, let the staff clean it up, and maybe apologize for the mishap. But not him. Instead, he dropped down on his hands and knees and started trying to scoop up the broken glass with his bare hands. We were horrified. It was like watching a car crash. You could see the disaster unfolding, but there was no stopping it. He sliced his hands open on the glass, blood dripping everywhere as he tried to gather up the shards. It was a gruesome sight, and before we could even react, the venue staff rushed over. They had to clean and disinfect the entire area, which took a while and threw a wrench into the flow of the evening. But that wasn't the worst of it. The venue decided that enough was enough. Because of his actions, they made the call to stop serving alcohol for the rest of the night and removed all the glassware. People had been looking forward to letting loose and celebrating, but now the bar was closed early, and there was a noticeable shift in the atmosphere. All because of one guy who couldn't keep it together. After cleaning him up as best they could, the staff sat him down at a table and brought him a plate of food, hoping to sober him up a bit. For a moment, it seemed like things might settle down. But halfway through dinner, just as everyone was starting to relax again, he suddenly stood up. We all turned to see what was going on, and that's when we noticed the growing stain on his pants. The guy had pissed himself right there in the middle of the wedding reception. You could feel the collective sigh from everyone around as the reality of the situation set in. The night was officially derailed, and any chance of getting back to the festive mood was gone. They had to discreetly shuffle him out of the reception area, and the rest of us just tried to focus on salvaging what was left of the evening. Later, as we were leaving the wedding, we found him passed out in the bed of a friend's truck. He was sprawled out, dead to the world, with no idea of the chaos he'd caused. Strangely enough, by the time we found him, he had somehow managed to change into clean, dry clothes, free of blood and stains. To this day, none of us know where those clothes came from or how he managed to change into them while in such a state. But there he was, out cold, but surprisingly presentable. Story 9. The venue itself was, well, let's just say it wasn't your typical wedding spot. The bowling alley had that classic Midwest charm. Neon signs, the smell of greasy fries in the air and the sound of balls crashing into pins echoing through the lanes. The ceremony was set up in a small, cordoned-off area in the back, with a few rows of folding chairs for the guests and a makeshift altar against the wall. It was quirky, sure, but the couple seemed happy with it, and that's what mattered. As the ceremony began, there was a sense of quiet amusement among the guests. You could hear the occasional strike or spare being cheered on from the lanes just a few feet away, a constant reminder that we were in a bowling alley and not a traditional wedding venue. But despite the unusual setting, things were moving along smoothly, at least until the unexpected interrupt. Right in the middle of the vows, as the couple was staring into each other's eyes, promising to love and cherish one another, 
One of the guys in the crowd suddenly stood up. He didn't just stand up quietly either. He raised his voice, cutting through the solemn moment, and announced to everyone that someone on the lanes was close to bowling a perfect game, a 300. The room fell silent for a beat, with everyone trying to process what had just happened. The bride and groom looked at each other, clearly taken aback. This was their moment, after all, and here was this guy interrupting it for a bowling score. But instead of being upset, they exchanged a glance, shrugged, and then something incredible happened. Everyone got up and headed over to the lanes. The entire wedding party and all the guests paused the ceremony and made their way to the bowling alley, gathering around to watch this guy attempt his perfect game. There was an air of excitement, the kind you don't usually find at a wedding, as everyone held their breath and watched him line up his shot. You could almost forget that a wedding had been happening just moments before. He took his shot, the ball rolled down the lane, and when it hit, the pins scattered perfectly. A strike. The alley erupted in cheers and the guy had bowled his 300. Strangers were high-fiving each other, and even the bride and groom were clapping along, caught up in the moment. For a few minutes, it felt like we were all part of something much bigger than a wedding. We were part of this spontaneous, shared celebration of a rare achievement. Story 10. One of the highlights of the ceremony was supposed to be the speech given by the bride's brother. He had always been a bit quirky, so everyone was looking forward to hearing what he had to say. When it was his turn to speak, he walked up to the front with a confident smile, carrying a large handmade poster board. His friend stood beside him, holding it up for everyone to see. The poster board was decorated with what looked like a target, a series of concentric circles, each with removable Velcro pieces. It was clear that he had put a lot of effort into this visual aid, and the guests leaned in, curious to see where this was going. He started his speech by explaining the concept of the target. According to him, the outer rings represented the acquaintances in your life, people you might not know well, but who are still part of your social orbit. He went on to explain that if you do a good deed for these acquaintances, they will be inspired to pay it forward, doing good deeds for two other people. It was an interesting concept, one that seemed to have some merit, and the guests listened attentively. As he spoke, he removed the Velcro pieces from the outer rings, revealing the words underneath that matched what he was saying. He then moved on to the inner circles, which he explained represented your close friends and family, the people who mean the most to you. He said that any good deed done for these individuals would have a ripple effect, influencing 10 or more people in a positive way. Again, he peeled back the Velcro pieces to reveal the words beneath. It was a thoughtful message about the power of kindness and the importance of paying it forward. The problem was this was a wedding speech. And while the message was lovely, it had absolutely nothing to do with the bride and groom. As the minutes ticked by, 5, 10, 15, it became increasingly clear that he wasn't going to mention them at all. He kept talking about the importance of kindness, the impact of our actions, and how we can make the world a better place by helping others. All the while, the couple stood there, smiling politely, but clearly wondering if he would ever get around to saying something about their marriage. The guests exchanged puzzled glances, trying to make sense of why this elaborate presentation was happening during a wedding ceremony. By the time he finished his speech, he had thoroughly explained his philosophy on paying it forward, removed all the Velcro pieces from the target, and wrapped up his presentation. But not once did he mention his sister or her new husband. There was no talk of their love story, no words of wisdom for their future together, and no acknowledgement of the special day they were celebrating. When he finally stepped down, there was a moment of awkward silence before the next part of the ceremony continued. The couple, ever gracious, didn't let it show that they were disappointed, but you could tell they were a bit taken aback by the unexpected detour their wedding had taken. The guests, on the other hand, were quietly buzzing about what they had just witnessed. Story 11. At first, it was just little things. My uncle's girlfriend was being more animated than usual, switching outfits with various guests throughout the night. One minute, she'd be wearing a simple dress. The next, she'd be in someone else's sequined gown. And then a few songs later, she'd show up in a completely different outfit again. It was bizarre. But in the whirlwind of the wedding, I just chalked it up to her being a bit eccentric and maybe trying to keep things lively. What I didn't realize at the time was that her antics went far beyond wardrobe changes. I found out later that she had been trying to hook up with various guests, both male and female, in the venue's restrooms. She was clearly out of control, and while most people tried to steer clear of her, she managed to make quite an impression on everyone she interacted with. As the night drew to a close, things took a turn for the worse. My uncle and his girlfriend, both well past the point of intoxication, started arguing. It wasn't just a quiet disagreement either. They were full-on shouting at each other, causing quite a scene. When it was time to leave, she flat-out refused to get into a car with my uncle. My dad, who's my uncle's brother, stepped in, trying to defuse the situation. He managed to convince her to get in the car with him instead, 
thinking he could safely drive her back to the hotel and avoid any more drama. But the drama was far from over. About halfway to the hotel, she started hitting my dad, yelling incoherently, and before he could react, she opened the car door and jumped out while the car was still moving. Miraculously, she wasn't seriously hurt, but the situation had gone from bad to worse in the blink of an eye. Later that night, after making it back to the hotel, she wasn't done causing chaos. She went down to the lobby wearing nothing but a hotel robe and began propositioning random people for, let's just say, an intimate encounter. Unfortunately for my wife's cousins who were relaxing at the hotel bar, they witnessed the whole thing firsthand. It was beyond embarrassing. They had come to celebrate our wedding, and instead, they got a front row seat to this woman's meltdown. As if that wasn't enough, my uncle and his girlfriend's antics continued in the hotel lobby. They got into a screaming match that quickly escalated. The noise and commotion were so intense that two of my wife's relatives, who happened to be doctors and just genuinely good people, thought someone might have been seriously hurt. They rushed out of their rooms to help, only to find out it was just my uncle and his girlfriend doing their thing. The situation got so out of hand that hotel security had to step in, and eventually the police were called. My uncle ended up getting arrested that night, adding another layer of chaos to an already unbelievable situation. To top it all off, their behavior led to them being banned from every Hilton hotel in the country. That's right. Hilton, a major hotel chain with locations all over the world, decided they were no longer welcome at any of their properties. It was the kind of outcome you'd expect from a wild bachelor party, not a wedding where two families were coming together. Story 12. Oh man, this wedding takes the cake. No pun intended. It wasn't just the guests who were a problem. The real issue was the bride herself. My husband's cousin, who shall remain nameless for reasons that'll become clear, was an absolute disaster from start to finish. The ceremony kicked off with what was supposed to be a heartfelt exchange of vows, but instead, we were subjected to half an hour of the bride airing out her grievances about her soon-to-be husband. Seriously, it was like she was listing reasons not to get married rather than pledging eternal love. It was one of those situations where everyone in the room was just cringing, silently praying for it to be over. You could practically feel the collective discomfort. People were shifting in their seats, glancing at each other like, is this really happening? But oh, it didn't end there. After that train wreck of vows, the bride decided to share a special moment with her dad. Now, traditionally, you might expect a father-daughter dance, right? Not here. Instead, she decided that the best way to celebrate her wedding was by singing their college alma mater together. Just imagine two people, totally off-key, trying to belt out a song that no one else knew or wanted to know. It was the kind of performance that made you want to crawl under the table from secondhand embarrassment. We're talking American Idol reject levels of bad. I could see the groom out of the corner of my eye, and let me tell you, he looked like he had been hit by a truck. He was either too drunk or too stoned to care about what was going on. At one point, he even muttered something under his breath like, What the hell is this crazy woman doing? It wasn't loud, but it was enough for those of us nearby to hear. Honestly, we all shared the sentiment. As the night went on, things just kept spiraling. The guests, including myself, started placing bets on whether the marriage would even survive the reception, let alone make it to the honeymoon. I wasn't even sure they'd managed to get out the door together. And then, in what I can only describe as the piece de resistance, the bride decided it was time for a slideshow. Now, I'm not against a good photo montage, but this one? It was something else entirely. We were forced to sit through what felt like an eternity of a photo slideshow memorial. First, it started with pictures of deceased relatives, which was weird enough for a wedding. But then, oh then, came the construction photos. Yep, you heard me right. She made us all watch an hour-long slideshow of her house being dirt, wood, drywall, paint colors, every excruciatingly boring detail you could imagine. There we were, dressed to the nines, sitting in our seats while she enthusiastically narrated each photo. And here's the foundation being poured. Oh, and here's the carpet we chose. It was like being trapped in some bizarre home improvement purgatory. We were all looking at each other mouthing WTF, but no one dared to say anything out loud. I think at that point we were all too stunned to react. But as if that wasn't enough to solidify her spot as the worst bride ever, she capped off the evening with one final jaw-dropping move. You see, her cousin had been bartending for the wedding. A nice gesture, considering she was a professional social event coordinator. But instead of thanking her or paying her like any decent person would, the bride flat out refused to pay. Can you imagine? It's like hiring a photographer and then stiffing them at the end of the night. Classy, right? After that debacle, it's safe to say that we don't talk to her anymore. The whole thing was a train wreck from start to finish. And honestly, I'm still amazed the marriage lasted long enough for them to make it to the honeymoon. If I had to sum up the whole experience in one word, it would be awkward. Actually, make that cringe-worthy. Story 13. 
My buddy's wedding was a real exercise in budgeting. Tight doesn't even begin to cover it. He and his fiancée had their hearts set on making it special, despite the financial constraints. The venue was spacious, big enough to invite a decent number of guests, but the cracks in the planning started to show pretty early on. See, they opted for a set menu dinner, which was fine in theory, but the problem was there just wasn't enough food to go around. Maybe it was poor planning. Maybe they underestimated the appetite of their guests. Or maybe it was just one of those things where good intentions couldn't quite match reality. Whatever the reason, it quickly became clear that a lot of people were going to leave this wedding still hungry. I was sitting with a group of our coworkers, including our boss. We'd all noticed the shortage of food, and it didn't take long for the conversation at our table to shift toward the awkwardness of the situation. After a bit of back and forth, we collectively decided that we'd just decline our plates. None of us wanted to be the reason someone else went hungry, especially at our friend's wedding. It seemed like a simple, considerate gesture at the time. But of course, nothing is ever that simple, is it? Not long after we passed on our plates, the groom's aunt caught wind of what we'd done. Now this woman was something else. Let's just say she wasn't exactly the picture of graciousness. She zeroed in on our decision like a hawk spotting prey and immediately started demanding that we hand over our plates to her and her kids. And here's the kicker. They'd already been served. Every last one of them had a full meal. But apparently that wasn't enough. She wanted seconds and she wasn't shy about making it known. She marched right up to the groom's brother, who was doing his best to keep things running smoothly and started laying into him. I couldn't hear every word, but the gist was clear enough. If they don't want their food, why can't we have it? My kids are still hungry and it's not fair. She was loud and the longer she went on, the more people started to notice the commotion. It was one of those situations where you can feel the tension in the air. The groom's brother tried to keep his cool, explaining that it wasn't as simple as just reallocating food. There were other guests to consider and the kitchen was running low as it was, but she wasn't having any of it. What started as a low-key wedding snafu quickly escalated into a full-blown argument. The aunt just wouldn't back down. She kept insisting that if we didn't want our meals, she had every right to take them. And her tone? Let's just say it wasn't exactly polite. You could see the groom's brother's patience wearing thin as he tried to calm her down, but she was relentless. Meanwhile, the rest of us at the table were just sitting there, trying to avoid eye contact and not make the situation any worse. We were stuck in that awkward limbo where you want to help, but also really, really don't want to get involved. It felt like the argument dragged on forever, though it was probably only a few minutes in reality. Finally, the groom's brother managed to convince the aunt to back off, though not without her leaving in a huff, muttering under her breath about the injustice of it all. The atmosphere at the wedding, already strained, felt even more uncomfortable after that. The food shortage, the argument, the awkward tension, it all combined to make what should have been a joyous occasion feel anything but. Story 14. Now, I've been to my fair share of weddings, but this one definitely sticks out in my mind for all the wrong reasons. It wasn't the kind of outrageous fiasco you hear about with cake fights or drunken brawls, but it had its own special brand of cringe-worthy moments that left everyone in attendance shaking their heads. First, let me paint you a picture of the scene. It was a warm summer day, and everything seemed to be set up for a beautiful outdoor ceremony. The decorations were simple but elegant, with fresh flowers and delicate drapes swaying in the breeze. The bride looked absolutely stunning, glowing with that special kind of joy that only a wedding day. Guests were milling around, chatting, and waiting for the ceremony to start. It was all pretty standard, until the groom's stepmother made her grand entrance. Now I've seen some bold outfit choices at weddings, but this one took the cake. She showed up in a mini-skirted suit that looked like it had been plucked straight from a fashion magazine, if that magazine was from the 1980s. The suit was pristine white, as in bridal white, which is a big no-no if you're not, you know, the bride. As if the miniskirt wasn't enough. She paired it with sky-high heels that made her tower over everyone else, and a large brimmed hat complete with a tiny veil. The whole ensemble screamed, Look at me! in a way that made everyone do a double take. I could see people nudging each other, whispering, and trying to discreetly snap pictures. You could almost feel the collective wince when she walked by. But that wasn't the only thing that went wrong that day. The real kicker came when it was time for the ceremony to start or at least when it should have started. We all gathered around, taking our seats, expecting the music to cue up any second. But instead, we just sat there and sat and sat. An hour went by, and people were starting to get restless, whispering among themselves, checking the time, and trying to figure out what the holdup was. Turns out, the officiant had completely forgotten he had a wedding to officiate that day. Yep, you heard that right. The guy was off at a barbecue, probably with a beer in one hand and a burger in the other blissfully unaware that he was supposed to be marrying two people that afternoon. The groom, bless his heart, had to personally track the guy down. I can only imagine the conversation that took place. Something along the lines of, Hey, 
Remember that wedding you're supposed to be at right now? Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the efficient showed up, looking flustered and smelling faintly of smoke and grilled meat. He didn't exactly rush through the ceremony, but you could tell he was trying to make up for lost time. By then, though, the mood had already shifted. What was supposed to be a joyous, romantic occasion had turned into a bit of a farce. When the ceremony finally wrapped up, there was a sense of relief more than anything else. The bride and groom still looked happy, but you could tell they were a little deflated by everything that had gone wrong. The guests, for their part, seemed eager to get on with the reception, maybe in the hope that things would turn around. And as for the groom's stepmother? Well, she continued to strut around in her miniskirt and heels, blissfully unaware, or maybe just unbothered, by the stir she'd caused. The bride, to her credit, kept her cool and didn't let it show if she was upset by the outfit. But there were more than a few sideways glances and raised eyebrows throughout the evening. Story 15. It all unraveled during the first dance, which, as you know, is supposed to be one of those romantic, tear-jerking moments where the newlyweds share a private, intimate connection in front of all their guests. The music started, and the bride and groom swayed together, lost in each other's eyes, as everyone watched on, smiles plastered across their faces. But just as the magic of the moment began to settle in, the atmosphere suddenly shifted out of nowhere. The bride's ex-boyfriend barged in, crashing the dance like something out of a bad dream. He didn't just awkwardly hover at the edge of the dance floor either. No, this guy went full drama mode. He pushed his way between the bride and groom, his eyes red and filled with a mix of desperation and heartbreak. You could practically hear the collective gasp from the guests. The bride froze, the groom looked like he was ready to punch someone, and the whole room tensed up, waiting to see what would happen next. For a few painfully long moments, no one moved. The ex stood there, visibly shaking, tears streaming down his face. Then, in a voice that was equal parts broken and defiant, he shouted, I'll always love you, and I'll be waiting for you when this marriage falls apart. His words hung in the air, thick with emotion and madness, as everyone stood in stunned silence. It was one of those moments where you could feel the tension crackling, like the air just before a storm. Thankfully, before things could escalate any further, a few quick-thinking friends rushed in, grabbing the ex by the arms and dragging him out of the venue. He didn't go quietly, though. As they hauled him away, he kept yelling, his voice fading as he was pulled further from the reception. It was like something out of a soap opera, and the guests were left reeling, unsure whether to feel sorry for the guy or be furious at him for ruining the moment. But here's where the story takes its first twist. Several months into what everyone assumed was a happy marriage, the bride discovered that her new husband wasn't who he said he was. I'm not talking about a few little white lies here. This was some next-level deception. It turned out that the groom was a full-blown con artist. He had fake IDs with multiple aliases, a criminal record that stretched a mile long, and had been married more times than anyone could count, each time under a different name. He was living a double, or maybe even triple, life, and no one had any idea until it all came crashing down. The day she found out the truth, he vanished. Just like that, gone without a trace. He left her not only heartbroken, but also completely blindsided, by the realization that she'd married a stranger. I can't even imagine what that must have felt like. The shock, the betrayal, the whirlwind of emotions that must have hit her all at once. But here's the kicker, the real plot twist that no one saw coming. Remember that ex-boyfriend who made a scene at the wedding? The one who was dragged out, kicking and screaming after vowing to wait for her? Well, it turns out he wasn't just being dramatic. After her scam artist husband disappeared, the ex-boyfriend came back into her life. At first, it was just to offer support to be a shoulder to cry on as she dealt with the fallout. But over time, that old flame reignited, 